Stephen, speaking as an old neuroscientist, when I wanted to ask the question, what are brains, I went to my old professors, a neuroanatomist, a neurophysiologist, and a psychophysiologist. And I got some great answers that very, very much comport with how I think about things. I suspect I may be leaving some things out, which is why I want to come to you. <laughs> so I guess one question that I'm curious about is sort of, what is the essence of intelligence? Mm -hmm. What is it that, uh, is, there a, is there a way to sort of abstract, is there a formal abstraction of what intelligence is? It's something we as, as humans would kind of like there to be because it's something that we feel sort of separates us from the rest of, of nature and, and other things. Mm -hmm. I think it's a hard question and I think in the end, the answers that we'll get won't be satisfying to us in a sense. Truth because is truth. <laughs> because I think, I think one of the things that I've kind of, one of the sort of tests for what is intelligence is, what one sort of test, this question of what is intelligence, you can kind of go and look at other questions like, you know, what is life, for example. You go back and look at sort of historical definitions of life. You know, the Greeks said, you know, if it moves itself, then it must be alive. <laughs> and then there were steam engines. <laughs> or people said, you know, if it could reproduce itself, then it must be alive. And then there were computer worms and so on. <laughs> um, and in the end, but yet when we look at a living thing and a non-living thing, we don't have much trouble telling them apart. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because there's sort of a common thread of history to all life on Earth of, you know, the same RNA and DNA and cell membranes and, and all this sort of thing. So there's an easy historical definition mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. but there doesn't seem to be an abstract general definition of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. It seems that, you know, life is, is for us defined by that sort of thread of history. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, what about intelligence? Is there sort of an abstract definition? And I think similarly that there's, that in the end, the most satisfying Factory definitions for us are kind of historical and they have to do with the intelligence that we as humans have in this kind of thread of, of, of intellectual activity. But there is sort of one test, which is if you're claiming that something is supposed to be intelligent, it better be able to do some non trivial kind of computation. If, the compu if all the computations that it can do are in a sense fundamentally trivial, then the thing will not qualify by sort of any reasonable definition as being intelligent. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, are there different levels of intelligence? Are there different levels of computational ability? And how do our brains, for example, compare with these other levels of computational ability that are sort of linked to being like intelligence? But it's kind of notable that in kind of everyday life, we say things like, you know, the weather has a mind of its own, <laughs> right? But I think there's actually a lot more to that statement than we might think. Um, the question is, if we sort of compare the weather as a computational, sort of perhaps almost intelligent system with our brains, how do they compare? And we might imagine that our brains would be sort of more sophisticated, more computationally able, more intelligent than any kind of system in nature. But I don't think that that's true. I think instead there's a sort of fundamental equivalence in the kinds of computations that can get done in the system which is our brains and lots of these systems in nature, whether it's a turbulent fluid and the weather or whether it's uh, lots of other kinds of things. And that, that's, um, in a sense, it's a, it's a, um, it's a sort of, it's unsatisfying for us that we can't distinguish ourselves, but it's also, it, it shows us that there are, there are sort of, there's a, there's a greater generality to where intelligence occurs. It's kind of almost, um, sort of historically, if one looks at the, the course of science and so on, you know, before science, there were things like animism, you know, mm, there sure. are the spirits, which uh, were mm -hmm. the ways to explain what was happening in nature. It's almost embarrassing that perhaps now with kind of the most recent things that we understand in science, that this idea that there are sort of things that are almost like uh, the, 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 the kind of the ways that we think about, uh, you know, how the weather works is it's a computation that's just like the computations going on in our brains. It, it kind of echoes the, the, it's almost like a spirit that is the same essential kind of thing. Uh, are you arguing that, that, that there may not be a generalization that can distinguish between the kinds of intelligence that we express yes. and the kinds of complex computations that turbulence or the weather uh, uh, engenders? Yes. yes, that's what I'm saying. And so, so kind of a test for this is thinking about extraterrestrial intelligence. Kind of, that's a, that's a version of intelligence that's absolutely abstracted from our particular history. Yes. And so there will be a question of how do we sort of recognize extraterrestrial intelligence? What, what kind of signals from the cosmos would make us conclude that the thing we were seeing was extraterrestrial intelligence? 
In the past, we might have said, you know, if we saw the result of some, uh, I don't know, the digits of pi or something coming mm -hmm. from, from the cosmos or the, or the primes or something coming from the cosmos, mm -hmm. this would be kind of absolute evidence that there must have been something like our kind of intelligence, that to get the, the prime numbers, we must have had to have had, you know, the development of, a, of an organism, a civilization, you know, a, a mathematics, all this kind of thing. But it just isn't true. I mean, there are very simple rules that could perfectly well generate a sequence that corresponds, let's say, to the primes. A good test case of this is in, in thinking about well, a couple of interesting historical examples. Uh, one that I kind of like is uh, from the early days of radio. Okay, so Marconi, who I think had a, a yacht that he used to ply the Atlantic mm -hmm. in. In the, in the middle of the Atlantic, he has his radio mast, and uh, he's listening to uh, radio emissions from the cosmos, right? And he hears these kind of funny sounds and so on. Um, and his immediate conclusion or his immediate guess was it must be radio signals from the Martians. <laughs> okay? What was it in fact? What it was in fact was um, some modes of the ionosphere that uh, correspond to some sort of complex physical process, but they were not distinguishable from sort of the, you know, the immediate assumption was these must be of intelligent origin, so to speak even though in actuality they came from something that we wouldn't usually attribute intelligence mm -hmm, to. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the, um, this is kind of, uh, I, I don't think that there's a kind of a way, I, I used to be a great enthusiast of extraterrestrial intelligence <laughs> and I got to thinking about, you know, how would you rent a radio telescope for a year, you know, turn the communication <laughs> uh -huh. satellites that aren't being used outwards to, <laughs> to look for things. But then I got a lot less excited about it because what I realized is, you know, the, in, um, when you are seeing these kinds of uh, sort of radio emissions from the cosmos and so on, I don't think there's a hard distinction between those things which sort of correspond to the operation of, quotes, intelligence in the historical sense that, uh, that we've come to know intelligence and, uh, and these kinds of uh, processes that are as computationally sophisticated but don't have that same thread of history. Is a conclusion that we can make from this that we elevate the aspects of the physical world that we have traditionally thought as non-intelligence, the weather and turbulence, or do we diminish the concept of intelligence that we have of ourselves or both? Well, I think the, you know, the, there's a question of what will happen in the sort of technological future because certainly, you know, human intelligence and so on will, will, will successfully capture lots of features of that in, in solid state electronics or, or whatever else. And we'll be able to have these, these sort of little, little chips and things that are, you know, doing the equivalent of thinking. And in the end, we'll have the, you know, everything will be sort of on an atomic scale and we'll be able to have this, this sort of object that has all these electrons mm. whizzing around in complicated patterns and we'll be saying, this is doing all these things that used to be the kinds of thinking that humans did perhaps less efficiently in their brains. But yet when we look at this thing, it's basically a rock. Mm -hmm. it, but it has electrons whizzing around in sure. complicated patterns. And then the question is that you have to ask is, you know, so what does this really mean? We've got something that has all these complicated patterns of electrons yeah. going around, but it's basically a rock like any other rock. Yeah. And what we realize from this is that if we are asking what is unique about us, you know, what is there that we've achieved throughout all of our civilization and so on? What we realize is that, you know, in science, we often look for these kind of universal results, these kind of abstracted things um, that are kind of independent of history and, and, uh, and, and all of that. But I think what, what we will ultimately realize is that the only thing that is sort of uh, uh, important and special is this whole thread of, of, of detailed history, that there isn't sort of an abstract essence of what it is to have intelligence and thinking and so on going on, that, that all of that is really common in sort of the, in, in the kinds of systems that can exist in our universe and so on. So it's only a cultural, historical thing that makes humans unique. Yes. And that, and that it kind of, uh, and that, that the, that the, the, um, uh, that sort of the, the thing that, while we might seek in science a great generalization of, of a concept like intelligence, that that will ultimately generalize to the point where sort of everything in the universe, including the universe itself, will qualify as intelligent. <laughs> and so to really be talking, so, so we don't, we, we're not able to, to, to generalize in that sense. And we're left sort of explaining what is special about us in terms of the details of our particular history and so on.